It is perhaps the last white spot on European maps. Schiperia, better known to us as Albania. For decades, it's been completely sealed off from the outside world. Hardly anywhere else are bias and reality as far apart as here. Albania is poor, but it is also rich, rich in mountains and a diversity of landscapes. A country with warm-hearted people and a Mediterranean lifestyle. People who travel to Albania should be ready for extraordinary surprises. Albania is roughly the size of Belgium. Nearly three million people live in this small country in the Balkans, and more than a third of them live in the metropolitan area of the capital, Tirana. The second part of our journey takes us to the south and east of the country. On the border with Macedonia is one of the oldest lakes in the world. Its name is Orid. The 350 square kilometer Lake Orid is a so-called ancient lake. Water became trapped here a million years ago. Lake Constance, for example, is a mere 20,000 years old. The shores of the lake are sparsely populated. For those who live here, life is not easy. The end of communism brought liberty to the people by the lake, but up to now, prosperity has not changed very much. Many have left here in recent years. Summer holidays. Who knows? Perhaps these primary school children will soon move to the capital, Tirana, with their parents. Or, like so many before them, leave Lake Orid for Western Europe. Ancient lakes such as Orid are almost like nature's long-term memory, with species that are impossible to find elsewhere including a number of endemic species, like the Orid trout or Koran, which is endangered due to overfishing. Fishing of any kind has actually been banned in Lake Orid for two years. Friends Flamor Selko and Astrid Tosca do not take much notice of the law. The two fishermen have been trout fishing for decades. With their old boat, on good days, they make just under 15 euros each. I was born and raised here, and I cannot live without the lake. It is special for me. The Ored Lake is a miracle. It's just beautiful. Some people also swim here. The lake is simply a really nice place. There are lots of fish here. Definitely 30 or 40 kinds of fish we have here. Trout, eels, and many other species. And of course, the Quran. We call him the king of the lake. UNESCO declared Orid Lake a World Heritage Site in 1979 because of its more than 200 unique species. The Koran, which survived even the Ice Age, is today threatened with extinction and is still sold everywhere.
It is easily recognizable because of its red dots, the king of Lake Orid, the Koran trout. Sixteen-year-old Frenis Cerbaci earns a little here in the summer holidays. It is not much, however. Today, he sold only three fish. He makes about one euro profit per fish. This will not help Frenis much at home. The annual fair in Pogradets, the largest city on Lake Orid. Next morning, we leave Lake Orid. Our goal is the largest city in southeastern Albania, Korcha. Years ago, mining engineers accidentally drilled through to an underground water source in the area, and water is still shooting out of the earth. Lady Antoka works here as a car washer. He washes four to five cars per day. A basic wash costs 200 lek, which is about one euro 40. So he makes seven euros a day. Ledian has seven siblings. He gets to keep about half of his salary. I'm here all day. I wait around all day. Nothing is certain. And you start to feel tired when you just have to wait. Sometimes a car comes, but many times there's nothing, which is quite frustrating. From Monday to Friday, there is very little work. Only on weekends, on Saturday and on Sunday, it's a little better. From the mountains at the edge of Lake Orid, we head south to the valley of Korcha. Traveling here takes a lot of time, through narrow mountain passes on donkeys or in cars. In the small towns and villages, the elderly often keep to themselves. The boys try their luck in the city. No wonder, with unemployment amongst young people at almost 30%. Young maths teacher Manuela Kreshka is lucky. She has two jobs. After school, she runs a cafe with her parents. The family bunker serves as a warehouse for the home distilled schnapps. All through Albania, bunkers are everywhere. Nowhere in the world is there a higher density of bunkers, nearly 200,000 of them in total. In backyards, fields, in the middle of towns, in a country with less than three million people, they are the legacy of a fallen dictatorship. But if you ask Manuela about her personal relationship with a family bunker, you'll be surprised. The bunker always reminds me of my childhood and the beautiful moments that I had here with my family and friends. I feel free here next to the bunker. Like so many others, Manuela dreams of leaving, preferably to Canada or Luxembourg. She has heard from friends that it is very beautiful there. And if not, she will take over her parents' cafe and produce raki from her own plums.
With more than 50,000 inhabitants, Korcha is the center of the Albanian southeast. Korcha's Bazaar. It has been a marketplace and supply station for caravans that stopped here for hundreds of years. Here you will find shops and market stalls that will send Western visitors on a journey through time. Anyone visiting blacksmith Petrit Kovaci in his workshop will feel transported back into the 19th century. Petrit is the fifth generation of blacksmiths in Korcha, and he learned everything he knows from his grandfather. Petrit has two sons. One is studying, the other runs a vegetable stall. Neither of them will continue the family tradition. This job has been my passion since I was 12 years old. Now I'm 61. I started working with my grandfather when I was a child. My father was a professor at the University of Applied Mechanics. I've always been in this profession, simply because it's my passion. For generations now, we've been blacksmiths. Throughout history, it was a very valuable craft. I imagine it's something like architecture. At my age, at 60, I have nothing to look forward to anymore. That makes me sad. And yet, smithing is what I'll have until the end of my life. We continue southwards. Again and again, you encounter horse carts like this one here. Baresa and Islam Kreka collect what others no longer need. Regular rubbish collection doesn't really happen in the countryside. The Viosa meanders through high gorges towards the Mediterranean. One of the very few rivers in the Balkans that still flow completely in their natural watercourse. Even so, the Albanian government is currently planning a gigantic dam project in its lower reaches. Biology professor Argir Proko is certain that would disturb the balance of nature of the river here in his home. We have to take care of our environment, keep it clean, look after it. The air we breathe, everything has an impact. If we're to avoid diseases such as cancer, as humans, pollution is one of the biggest problems we have. And the Vyosa is actually one of the cleanest rivers in all of Albania, especially here. The impression of pure nature is repeatedly clouded by one thing, 
even here at the headwaters of the Vyosa. Rubbish. The whole country is strewn with illegal, unauthorized dumps. From the Viosa, we come to the city of stone, to Girokastra. Girokastra has been on the UNESCO list of World Cultural Heritage Sites since 2005. The houses resemble small fortresses and for centuries have characterized the area around the castle today's old town. Nesip Skenduli grew up in one of the most beautiful houses in town. The family of Enver Hocha, who later became a dictator, lived close by. After taking power in 1944, Hocha declared Nesip's home to be state property. Only in the 90s did Nesip get his 300-year-old birthplace back. This house is a lot of work, and what makes me sad is the fact that I don't have enough money to maintain the house in the long term. At the time, UNESCO allocated 2 million euros for preserving the most valuable houses in the city. Nesip's undoubtedly counts as one of them. Yet he did not get a penny. The old boy network shared the money amongst themselves. During the communist era, my family's hopes of getting our house back caused us much suffering. Although we knew that we would get the house back again at some point, my family has suffered a lifetime. We did eventually get our house, but we were never really morally recompensed. Everywhere, there are precious carvings on the ceilings and wall coverings. 34 rooms full of little treasures. Nesip has converted his birthplace into a small museum. Entry costs 50 euro cents and includes a private tour. Whether he'll be able to raise the 20,000 euros which is needed for the renovation of the roof alone is uncertain. Nesip will soon lay responsibility for the family home in the hands of his daughter. She recently lost her job, not because she was a bad worker, but because the new local government unceremoniously replaced all teachers who did not have the right party affiliation. Corruption is a major problem in Albania, and yet Edlira is optimistic, against all odds. <laughs> I feel blessed that I will inherit this house, even if I've never lived here. It is very valuable to me. This is not just a part of my family history, it's also a part of the history of all Girokastra. Secret passages connect the different levels of the house. During communist rule, Nesip lived with his sister and parents in this room for 20 years. I was young, and I didn't really understand anything. But living in this room was like living in a small prison. Nesip's father was tried and taken into custody. He was later convicted as an alleged secret agent. It destroyed my sense of peace forever. After the regime change, we were initially very happy. But over time, our disappointment grew. Nobody can give me those lost years back. 
And now I'm in a similar situation, although in a different way. The bitter reality is that there is no democracy in Albania, even today. And it just makes me very sad. And those of us who were politically persecuted, we've not been compensated. What can you say? From Giro Castra, we go down to the Ionian Sea, to Butrint. On the way to the Mediterranean is a mysterious place, Siri Ikalta which, roughly translated from Albanian, means the blue eye. A well at least 50 meters deep in the midst of a magical pine forest. Expedition teams from around the world have tried to dive down to the bottom. So far, without success. Six cubic meters of water per second gush out of here. The blue eye is supposedly the most abundant water source in Albania. It is amazing how quickly the landscape changes in Albania. About 30 kilometers in one direction, you will find rugged mountainous terrain, and 30 kilometers to the other is the Mediterranean Sea, in between, at Syria El Calta, there is a jungle-like landscape, similar to Central or South America. In communist times, only the party elite were allowed entrance. Twenty kilometers further west, the Butrint Lagoon. Lada Husi has worked here for more than 30 years as a shellfish farmer. Here, right on the Mediterranean, conditions for shellfish farming are ideal. In the backwaters of the lagoon, fresh water is replaced every six hours with salt water. These regular water changes are toxic to bacteria, which plague other mussel farmers elsewhere. The mussels hang on 100 meter long lines called mussel socks. They are good for breeding. A single mussel produces one to 2,000 larvae. After two to three years in the water, larder can then harvest. Larder works in a cooperative with 15 other mussel farmers. Everyone is his own boss here. He spends two to three hours a day on the water. In the last four years of communism, we were allowed to export our mussels to Italy, and they were very good quality. And they still are. But Albania is not a part of the EU, and that is a disadvantage for us because of the food safety regulations. And that's a shame, because our good natural conditions would give our mussels a competitive advantage in the European markets. Back on land, the freshly harvested mussels are processed directly in the cold store. 
This belongs to the Mussel Farmers Cooperative, and when you go inside, you are surprised. No trace of rusty post-socialism. The modern system made in Italy is Lada's pride and joy. He brought in 41 kilos of mussels today. After treatment in the vibrating machine, there will be 20 kilos for sale. Lada will sell them at the market for 2,000 lek, about 15 euros. We want the mussel market to be opened as soon as possible for export. Then we could create five to six hundred new jobs here in Butrint alone. Currently, there is only a fraction of that. If the European markets open up, we could get to work. The Butrint Lagoon is right next to the Mediterranean Sea. It's also the most important archaeological site in Albania. Two and a half thousand years ago, Butrint became very well known as a spa and festival venue, even in faraway lands. People seeking healing flocked from afar to the sacrificial spaces, temples and fountains of the Lagoon City. Troy in miniature, the Roman poet Virgil once wrote. For centuries, changing rulers left stone testimonies of their power. The Turkish conqueror Ali Pasha built a fortress here many centuries later. From Butrint, we travel along the Albanian coastal mountains to the north. Dukat, in the heart of Albania, 800 meters above the Mediterranean. Singing is part of daily life here, a very early form of communication. Fatorsh Tahiri's day job is as an obstetrician in a small outpatient clinic. In his free time, he is head of the local polyphonic choir. All eight singers in the choir, like Fatosh, have a regular job and rehearse in the evenings. They have already performed all over Albania and even in Israel and Holland. It's a bit like with American gospel music. The cantor sings a question or request and the rest of the choir responds polyphonically. Songs comprise the oral traditional history of this remote part of Albania and are passed from generation to generation through singing. For many years I used to volunteer, teaching our songs to children, at least the generations before the regime change in 1990. Since then, everything has changed. The schools do not want it anymore. They have no interest in polyphony. They now have other priorities. 
My dream is that we can connect with the younger generation again and teach them more of our traditions of polyphony, our habits, to give them our culture. Over the Logara Pass, and we go back to the Ionian Sea. Albania, a land of scenic beauty. The New York Times recently published a list of 50 places in the world that travelers should see before they die. In fourth place, first place in Europe, was the Albanian Mediterranean coast. But Albania is also a country with scarily poor economic prospects. Every second young Albanian wants to leave the country. Tourism could offer a better prospect. Crystal clear water and almost deserted beaches things almost unknown in other countries nowadays. Some of the most exciting dive sites in the Mediterranean are in Albania. And nobody knows the underwater world here better than the 44-year-old Igli Pustina. It's something special. Water like this is usually only found on the Red Sea, in Italy or in Polynesia. Mother Nature is almost untouched and that makes it special. Personally, the best thing about diving here for me is that you can see Roman ships, or ships from the First and Second World War. Whenever you go diving, it's an experience. Nearly a dozen shipwrecks are gathered around the Karaburin Peninsula, most of them from the First World War, including the HMS Phoenix, the only English warship ever sunk by the Habsburg Navy. For the first time in their history, Albanians are not only independent, but also free. On land, Igli is sometimes not sure if they will manage to make something of their future. Down here in the crystal clear waters of the Ionian Sea, however, these doubts are far away. We continue north, towards the Divyaka Karavasta National Park. Karavasta is one of 14 national parks in Albania, quite a lot for a small country. But national parks here are often purely paper parks. They exist only on paper, without there being any real protective measures for the ecosystem. In Karavasta, the largest lagoon in Albania, things are different. One of the two largest Dalmatian pelican colonies in Albania is here. These animals have become extinct in many places in Europe, and even in Albania, their numbers fell for years. Lately, however, the numbers have been growing again. Ornithologist Dorian Nasi has counted nearly 50 breeding pairs in Karavasta this spring. Uh, 
At that time, during communism, 250 pelican pairs lived here. Then came the change, democracy, and there were less birds. The people here, the fishermen, the pelicans unfortunately didn't matter to them. In 1997 there was a civil war and it became really critical. But after that, things improved. We try to better protect the pelicans' habitat, and over the years their numbers have fortunately risen again. The Dalmatian pelican is one of the largest of the pelican family. Up to 5% of the world population now live in Caravasta. Before, local fishermen often took no notice of the pelicans. For several years now, boys have been keeping them at a distance. And, just as importantly, Dorian Nazi and his staff have been able to significantly reduce the wastewater discharges into Caravasta. An hour away by car, Tirana. Tirana is not only the capital of Albania, it is also the center of a liberal and open-minded Islamic community, Bektashis, they call themselves. Dede Baba Mondi is their spiritual leader. Dede Baba can be roughly translated as grandfather. When the newly elected Pope Francis was wondering which country he should tour first, he opted for Albania, a country with a Muslim majority. But unlike elsewhere, the different denominations largely live peacefully together. Even weddings between Muslims and Christians are not unusual. Of course, the Pope also met Dedi Baba, whether the Holy Father in Rome also takes care of his correspondence personally, hardly likely. With its tolerance and its undogmatic form of Islam that even allows images of the Prophet, the Bektashis show that Muslims and Christians can live peacefully together. But what is Bektashism? What do the Bektashi believe in? We know four tariqas or mystical ways. Bektashism is one mystical path of Islam. We're very liberal in the sense that all the people are the same to us, no matter what religion, national origin, political ideas, color or race they are. <coughs> we respect both sexes, and for 800 years they have been doing their rituals in dervish monasteries together. Women do not wear a headscarf, because we believe that a person's character is crucial. No matter how veiled a person is, if he wants to do something bad, he will do it. A scarf cannot alter that. People must be free before God and before the law. This freedom helps people to use their minds to distinguish the good from the bad. Under communism, Albania was the only officially atheist country in the world. All religions were banned. After democratization in 1990, churches and mosques have been built throughout the country. The world center of the Bektashi order, something like the Vatican or Mecca, on the outskirts of Tirana. A private audience with Dede Baba. His real name is actually Edmund Brahimai, he used to be an officer in the Albanian army, 
After the change to democracy in 1990, he discovered religion. For four years, he has been the spiritual leader of all Bektashis. Every follower can get personal advice from him about vital issues. Opinions differ as to how many Bektashis live in Albania. According to official figures, just over 60,000. Dede Babamondi is sure that there are considerably more. Homage to Haji Bektash, who founded the order 700 years ago. At the end of the day, Dede Baba enters a small side building of the temple all alone. A holy ritual reserved only for him. Through the night, he says goodbye to his predecessors, the spiritual leaders of the Bektashis. For decades, they were persecuted. Many of them were killed for their faith. I'm always very optimistic, because we Bektashi are very peaceful. We live in peace with each other and with other religions. The most beautiful thing about Albania is that you can get married here even if the couple does not belong to the same religion, which is almost a miracle and happens almost nowhere else in the world. We have always been opposed to terrorism and violence, because, as our prophet says, if you kill a man, you have killed all mankind. We will always remain faithful to our way, and that means peace, love and goodwill. It is perhaps no coincidence that the Bektashis are more at home in Albania than anywhere else in the world. The Albanian writer and poet, Pashko Vasa, put it best when he said, let us all, as brothers, swear an oath not to mind church or mosque. The religion of the Albanians is Albanianism. The Dedebaba would certainly not contradict him. <laughs>